Um, and thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor, for that, that summary of the, the many crises we face. Um, I, I, we, we have a, a tabled mayor's question. We've, we've tabled some written questions today from our group. Um, and we do discuss things regularly as well. Um, so I do have some questions for you today, um, but they're quite factual and um, short, you'll be pleased to know. Um, so start, starting with you for a few minutes, um, I want to ask about the, the new council homes acquisition programme. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Right to Buy Back initiative. I think that we should be buying as well as building new council homes. Um, obviously, my group can't take the credit for all of this, but, but we did put forward a budget amendment in 2021, which, which looked exactly at purchasing homes to, to let to key workers. Um, but yes, looking at your announcement of the council homes acquisition programme, um, I would love it if these were additional social rented homes. But your answer to my question, uh, 2023 4424, did say this was part of the AHP 2021 to 26. So I want to know what's happened to your overall target for social rent homes. Um, presumably, in funding some of the acquisitions, you've lost some of the, the grant you'll be a, you're able to give for building. And are you able to give us the new overall target and by what number you've reduced the numbers of social homes that you're going to build under that program? Under the AHP? Under the overall AHP for... Mark to on. There we are. Uh, yes, under the overall AHP, um, we, with agreement with DLUC, uh, given that the, the world had changed in terms of the macroeconomic situation, uh, we uh, reprofiled, well, asked partners to reprofile. Uh, and we now have, rather than the 35,000 target, we have a target range of between uh, circa 23,000 and just over 27,000 uh, homes, uh, reflecting those changed uh, economic circumstances. Um, just to say as well, um, proportionally, there will be more homes for social rent delivered within that because um, we've been pushing for that for a long time and, and it just so happened that the Secretary of State um, happened to agree that, that we should be doing more homes for social rent as part of that. That's really great. So do you have an because you've obviously given out the number 10,000 in connection with the Council Homes Acquisition Programme. Um, so the, does, the does 10, that mean 000, you're only now building 14,000? The 10,000 is, is, is over 10 years, so it will cover multiple uh, AHPs. So the maximum acquisitions uh, uh, we can do um, under the rules that are set by the government will be, be de depending on where we get to on the range, between about 2,300 and about 2,700 under this program. Um, that will be the maximum we can do in terms of acquisitions because that's where the cap is. So the, uh, the rest to make up the 10,000 that you've announced you want to build will be in future Future affordable programs. homes programs because it's a, over a 10 year period. Okay, that, that is very useful. Thank you very much. We will discuss this further. Um, at future sessions. Um, so now, with my time that I have left, I'd like to turn to, to Lisa, um, Lisa Fairmainer from the uh, London Plan team. Um, and I think because this plenary is looking at the current challenges facing London, um, we, we need to, to look really clearly at what kind of people we're trying to build the homes for at the demographics that's, that's going on. Um, the Housing in London report that comes out from the GLA that's towards the housing strategy, but I believe your team must have quite a lot of contact with, um, it highlights that overcrowding in London continues to increase. And at the same time, we've got, as we saw in the census, demographic changes going on with the number of children on school rolls decreasing. London boroughs are predicted to be losing around 7,000 reception pupils by 2026. Um, so we've got two issues here. We've got families crowded into homes. We've got quite a lot of um, hidden families, um, parents living with their parents. Um, in these overcrowded homes. And then we, we clearly have other people just deciding to have fewer children. Um, and that's a really serious consequence of that level of overcrowding. Um, but also these are, it, these are two slightly contradictory trends. So I wanted to ask what kind of research your team are doing on this um, and when you're going to be publishing it. And can you publish anything separate on, on teasing out these trends that, that come in different types of data as well? Um, so that we can really understand what's going on. Thank you. Uh, we're expecting to do the new strategic housing market assessment next year. 
so the timing of that is quite critical. We have to make sure it's still up to date by the time we get to examination in public, uh, but equally we need to know what London's housing need is before we can start uh, having a look at what the London plan might need to change in order to address that need. And that will look at um, across things like tenure, household makeup and those demographic points that you raise um, along with things like multi-generational families um, and, and those aspects. So in terms of the kind of research that you're doing, the, the census, the 2021 census was quite complicated by the fact that the, the pandemic was still ongoing at that time. Um, the, the Housing in London report sort of says that. It says some of this data may be quite inaccurate. Um, and we've got the English Housing Survey, and we can only ever use that because the sample size was cut a few years ago over a three-year rolling average. Is that enough? Are we not going to have to? Are your team going to be co commissioning additional research to look in more detail at this? Because it seems to me like getting this wrong would be really serious. At the moment, we're just in the stage of writing up the methodology um, to make sure that we get that methodology right. And we will look to agree that next year um, and then go forward with that. And I probably should have mentioned as well, we were a long way through the um, Gypsy and Traveller Needs Assessment, which obviously will look at that. Um, and we're expecting to publish that next year as well. So at the moment, we're still looking at what the methodology will be for the Shema. Um, are you confident that you've been resourced enough to do any original research that might be needed to, to clarify, or are you still going to be relying on these, these data sources that I mentioned? I think we'll certainly take into account those data sources, um, but we are confident that we're resourced sufficiently to get whatever information that we need to, to look at that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I'll just move on to another part of the London. Assembly Member Berry, um, I, I don't like to interrupt you in full flow, but Mr. O'Shea did indicate that he would like to reply. Would, have you I'm extremely thank sorry. You. I did. I did mention to you before the session that I'm very tight on time and it, that I wouldn't be able to come to any brief. other <laughs> members of the, the panel. It's just incredibly brief. I'm sorry. Generation Rent have just published a report on um, the trends of private renters within. Uh, the United Kingdom, but specifically within London, and the biggest trend, the overhead trend we've seen, is suburbanisation. So people moving outwards, especially because of the cost. Um, I'm happy to send that report across to the Assembly at large. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That would be very kind. Thank you. And I'm really sorry. I am very much on the clock here. You, you can't see my clock, but it is <laughs> quite scary to see the time ticking away. Um, Lisa, I wanted to come back to you. Um, obviously, data gathering and evidence are really, really important, um, but also is also engagement with, with Londoners, consultation with residents of London, consultation with different groups of Londoners. I know you've already had a number of stakeholder events, and I've specifically asked about youth engagement. Um, I'm still a bit concerned that these stakeholder events are slightly self-selective, people who are already interested in planning, and that may not include young people, um, and a bit exclusionary, therefore, in their, in their nature. Um, what other work are you doing to ensure that your engagement with Londoners about the New London Plan is representative of the demographic of our city, including young people? Of course. So there's, I think, 10 different programmes that are underway, of which some of them are self-selecting and some of them are not. Um, in terms of the ones that aren't, we've got, uh, we had 160 participants spend six hours with us exploring the challenges London faces. And those cohorts were in groups of 40, and each one was representative of Londoners as, as a whole. In terms of the youth voice, we've somewhat hijacked the Design Future London program that's now in its third year uh, to use that to understand and bring the voice of children and young people into the next London plan. Um, there's specific the sessions with schools running today and tomorrow, and then we've got cohorts specifically from schools with high pupil premium, high um, send need um, coming in all throughout the week next week to run specific uh, engagement with them to understand, I think, in two parts, their, their priorities and aspirations for the city they live in, um, but also as part of the wider design challenge, we want to understand when they've designed an amazing thing as part of their design challenge, what we're going to take from that is what were they trying to achieve, why were they trying to achieve that, what were their priorities, whatever that might be, and that will all be part of that um, that that first phase of, of the Planning for London programme. 
that sounds really interesting. I'm really glad that you're going and engaging at the school level as well, because that is where you'll find the, the parents. Are you, are you trying to engage also with people who have maybe chosen not to be parents? <laughs> Yes, and when I go back to the deliberative events that we hosted, that also included um, things like household makeup and family makeup to ensure that it was representative of London as a whole. Um, and I can always provide the criteria by which people were specifically recruited, um, and it's by invitation I need to participate in that. So we had a baseline of views and priorities and information um, from people that were representative specifically for that reason, so that when we do the self-selecting work, we had something to compare it against. Okay, thank you very much. Now, um, the final thing I wanted to ask um, was, in, in what order are you going to be publishing all of these things? I mean, the, sh the, the, schma, the social housing market um, assessment is, is really, really useful. Sorry, the strategic housing market assessment is really, really useful and comes with a lot of uh, background papers. Um, from our point of view as an assembly trying to engage with it, it would be helpful to see some of the background papers in advance. And have you got a publication schedule going forwards for the evidence base as it emerges? I think that would be a really, really useful thing for us to be able to see. We don't for the SHMA, no. Um, and as I said, the SHLA, which is the land availability, which is the, the other half of that piece of work. Um, similarly, uh, that's going to be a live database. Um, from next year that, that that will launch next year that people can put sites into um, and they, they'll go through a process but there'll be a mechanism for that to bring forward so we have a live picture of understanding about housing land availability across London um, and those two pro projects will go live we expect towards the middle of next year. That's really exciting. Was that in any way influenced by the work that we did to put forward the idea of having a People's Land Commission and enabling people from across London to contribute to thoughts about their own particular neighbourhoods and sites within it? I think, I think we've, we've definitely been conscious that there shouldn't be any gatekeeping of the bringing forward of potential sites. There has to be some analysis to make sure that sites don't come forward that are not appropriate to be on that list. But Nonetheless, anybody should be able to put forward a site, whether that's the development industry, whether that's a member of the public, but also thinking about publicly owned land, for example. So, so there should be a range of ways in which we bring sites forward and understand what the capacity is across London and those opportunities. Thank you very much. Um, and then, as you know, <laughs> part of the reason I'm very enthusiastic about having a People's Land Commission is due to the fact that when I was quite young, I took part in the BBC's Doomsday Project, <laughs> which enabled me to go out and look at my local area in a way that, 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 that went on to some exciting laser discs. Um, but also, this, this concept that going into schools and asking schools to, to take part in this, again, is where everybody is. Is your school project going to link up? with that Schla sites project in any way um, and our school is going to be invited to contribute to that because I think that would be one way to open up access in a way that that reaches everybody we were certainly not planning for I mean for for young people to be putting forward sites specifically and I think we would definitely have an age limit on it because I think there's a data management issue there. One of the things that we're trying to work through, for example, is how to manage that data because there may be some confidential sites um, that, that, you know, somebody might not want the employees that are currently employed there to know that there's a potential that could change its use. So we're trying to work through all the data management issues. I wouldn't envisage that's the case, but what I would suggest is that we have guidance now, and it's very clear in the London plan, that local areas should do a characterisation study, and that characterisation study should lead towards the growth strategy for an area, and there's definitely an opportunity for children and young people to have a voice in, in, in expressing their sense of place, what's important to them, and those, those things as well as part of that wider work that we would see being done at a, at a local level. Or okay. neighbourhood level. <laughs> okay, so the, the schlar will not be for children, but potentially we might be able to, to talk again about involving a little bit more. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you.